morning. Welcome to Bethel Family Worship Center. Like, share this across all your digital platforms. This is the year of 2022, and our bishop is coming forth with a word of revelation for you for this year. We're in our 12 days of prayer and fasting, and we want you to join us in that. So again, like and share so that you'll have the instructions, and all of your family and friends will have the instructions. So God bless you, and thank you for joining us this morning. Go into a word of prayer. Hands lifted up and our mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving, we will bless you, O Lord. Lord, as we lift up your name this morning, we ask you to lift up our heads. As we lift up your name this morning, Lord, we ask you to lift up our hearts. As we lift up your name this morning, Lord, we ask you to lift frustration. As we lift up your name, we ask you to lift oppression. As we lift up your name, we ask you to lift anxiety. As we lift up your name, we ask you to lift poverty. As we lift up your name, we ask you to lift, lift illness and infirmity. Lord, we lift up our pastor to you, Bishop George Bloomer, and his family. Bethel Family Worship Center, Clerk International Assemblies, release grace and peace to provide a hedge of protection around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Bethel Family Worship Center. This Sunday morning scripture is entitled, Stand Fast. We will be reading from Philippians 1, 27 through 28, Ephesians 6, 10 through 13 and 18, 2 Timothy 2 and 3, and 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having, all, having done all to stand, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Well, it's January, it's the beginning of the year, and Lord, you've been good to me. You've been good to me better than good to me. I can't praise you enough, I can't thank you enough, but you've been good, all right? Mask up, wash your hands, and practice the social distancing regardless to whether it's being enforced by political uh, 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 platforms and what have you, stay safe. Now, this thing is busting out uh, 1.5 uh, or 4 
million since Wednesday and today is Sunday and so we can only imagine what the numbers are right now and at the time that the Lord was revealing and showing this to me that we were going to have a season where it's going to look like it's gone and then it's going to come back with a vengeance I thought it was this this um this delta I, I I'm not a prophet I, I I just thank God that he shared it with me showed it to me and that I said it I didn't want it to come to pass schools are closing my grandson called me and said it was a breakout in their in their schools uh, the schools are shut down in in uh, Chicago why, why did they even open back up this is just crazy um, now our kids life is is on the line uh, but we're in a season of consecration season of consecration and uh, this is uh, put up my uh, consecration for, there, there you go 12 days of prayer and fasting 12 days of prayer and fasting January the 5th through the 16th 6 a.m. in the morning is our corporate prayer and from a 6 to 12 is the first watch 12 to 6 is the second watch 6 to 12 is the third watch okay and this is day number five and day number five today is this uh-huh day five may preparation prepare thy work without and make it fit for thyself in the fields and afterwards build thine house proverbs 24 27. now you know in my book uh my power principles book it is a principle that says preparation precedes blessings and so if you're expecting to be blessed you got to sit down, count the costs, put things together, and prepare for the blessing that is coming. And I come to tell you that the blessings are coming. The number five also is the number of grace. Uh, the grace uh, in, in, in association with the word favor. Favor is grace and grace is favor. Uh, can you imagine today is a day of his grace and his favor in the year of God's release? I pray that this time of consecration, that's right, that's okay. I pray that this time of consecration uh, has been great for you. Not only the dismissal of food, but just a time where you can just gather your thoughts and pull things together. Uh, the breakout of this uh, pandemic has even touched our church. It's touched our church and we're, we're, we're not open. We were planning on opening up on New Year's Eve. That was our plan, New Year's Eve to open up and um, uh, if we would have done that, if we, if we would have done that with the information that we have right now, this entire place would be uh, on lockdown and some, some folks would be in the hospital right now. Uh, continue to pray for me. Continue to pray that I keep my, 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 my ears to God's lips to hear what he's speaking. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I just believe the word of the Lord and it says rise shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee it says though darkness has covered the earth even gross darkness the people but there's a scripture pastor Sonia there's a scripture in uh, it's in the classic um, um, it's in the uh, amplified Bible Psalm 60 and it says it this way it says arise from the uh, oppression depression and prostration over which circumstances have kept you gather the picture in your mind that the cares of this world has rested on your shoulders to the point that it has oppressed you into a situation where you can't even get up out of the bed but you're not sick you can't move but you're not sick you just frustrated you just can't take anymore rise to the newness rise to the radiance of a word that is being spoken over your life get up from where you are and start all over again this is your hour this is your season for tremendous breakthrough thank you thank you thank you thank you healing shall be our portion all right praying for the kids that are in school uh, the business community has so much power over the politicians that they have them. It, 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 it has even gotten its way into the CDC where they dropped the 10-day uh, quarantine down to five days quarantine. And the, the science on it says that you can have it for three days and not.
not even know that you have it. Great day in the morning. And, 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 and you, can, you can show that you are uh, uh, negative three days with it. And then it shows up. We need to pray. So again, put up my chart for me. If you will, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Preparation. Preparation. Prepare for a move of God in your life over these 12 days. And the grace and the favor of God shall be on you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You're transforming your living room into a sanctuary. We're about to have church. We, we're about to have church. We're about to have church. On Tuesday of last week, uh, the Lord spoke to me and he says, uh, shut it down. Uh, I, I, I called around. I had this uncertain feeling in my heart. We already spent money. We had people, guests coming in, all this type of things happening. Then airlines shut down. It did, it did, different things started happening. And then major churches started closing, not only just closing for their New Year's service, but indefinitely closing until further notice. January, February, and March are going to be dark months. But rise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord shall risen upon you. The presence and the power of the Lord is going to be on you and you are going to be blessed in spite of all that is going on, in spite of all that you're seeing, in spite of all that you're dealing with, the blessings of the Lord is going to be with you. So let's praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Woo! Ah. Lord, you are good. I owe you my life, I can't praise you enough, even if I tried all you did, so good to me, Lord, Lord, you are good.
gracious and kind God, there is none like you in all of the earth. You're the lift of our head and the strength of our heart. It is you that give us victory in the midst of our storms. It is you that we testify about bread when we're hungry, water when we're thirsty, a battle axe in the time of battle. It is you that give us strategic strategies and even when we have veered away from you, you still remain faithful. For your word teaches us that even when we're not faithful, you remain faithful for you will not deny yourself. For God, you love the world so much that you came in giving and you gave your best. And on this morning, we wanna give our best back to you. Let healing, let deliverance, let breakthrough, woo, be the portion of your people today but most importantly, let laughter be there. Laughter, that medicine that heals in the name of Jesus. And we will survive this storm that we're under. We give your name praise for it. And in this season, we thank you for prosperity. For prosperity. We pray for our government leaders. We pray for them. We pray for this president in the name of Jesus that you would just shake him some kind of way to not be political and to do the right thing by shutting this nation down in the name of Jesus, cleansing our atmosphere, having our children safe in the name of Jesus. The money will come back but lives are being lost touch him in the name of Jesus not to worry about being reelected but do real good while he is already elected we thank you for it now in Jesus' name Woo. I give you praise I give you praise for you
God bless you, Bethel. Welcome to our morning service. And this morning, I want to talk to you a little bit about consecration, a little bit about a prayer, a real, little bit about uh, reset and uh, start uh, praying. Reset, start uh, uh, praying. And I want you to continue to pray throughout uh, this year. I'm so excited um, uh, for you. Somebody gave me a, uh, a, um, a tape, oh, not a tape, they don't, they don't have tapes no more, uh, a little CD something they gave me, uh, and, 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 and they said, listen to this. And, and, and Colin, guess, guess what it was? You, it was you blowing. Oh, and it, it, it was something else. And it was... Uh, uh, um, it was this, this, the, the, the song was that, that's the time. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you just need to be married. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> huh? You did it. Wow, I didn't know. Wow. Okay. That's the time. You feel like making love. Wow. So, 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 so you've been married. Um, I know you told me you was going to get married, but you told me you was going to get married this year. I, I, I understand that. That's not what I'm saying right now. What I'm saying is you told me you were going to get married in this year. Uh, then you say, I said, you're going to get married. You say, yeah, next year. And that. You're right. The pandemic just threw us off and stuff like that. Wow. How many kids you got? No, I'm joking. <laughs> and and, and he, he just riding with me. He's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, so congratulations, and I'm going to give you and the, uh, your wife a, a nice uh, gift or something like that. Y'all like C's chocolate? All right, well, we'll do something like that. As long as it don't cost me a whole lot, let me give y'all something. <laughs> Bishop gives nice gifts. He really, really does. Amen. Thank you. How, how long have you been here with us? Thank you so much. You've been a blessing to me every year that you've been here. Thank you. And uh, may the Lord bless you and your uh, new bride. Happy for you. And may all the provisions that goes along with being successful that rest on my shoulders falls on you, that you have everything that you need in Jesus name and enough to share whoo that's a word somebody need to snatch that in Jesus name um who my message this morning is turn on the lights Turn on the lights. It's a message about illumination. I'm going to be done in a few minutes. If you were planning on dancing and shouting, uh, God did not speak to you. This is, <laughs> this is just a few instructions uh, to get us good. Can you give me, can you give me tomorrow's, tomorrow's day six prayer challenge? Can you give me tomorrow's uh, uh, prayer challenge? Put it up, up on the screen since I'm not going to be with you on tomorrow. There you go. Uh huh. Day 6, June. Health. Genesis 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. 3 John 1 and 2. You know, um, I wanted that because I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Genesis uh, this morning 
But there's a song out there that says, say, say, Bishop, we're supposed to be on consecration. You keep on carrying us to the world. You live in the world. Stop that foolishness. You know what's going on in the world. It's, 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 it's going to all blend in together. Um, there's a song that uh, says, Turn out the lights. to the song, Pastor Sonia. Give me the words to the song. And it says, turn out the lights and light a candle. Tonight, I'm in a romantic move, mood. Yeah. Now, that's all I can say. Because you say any more with these lyrics, People are gonna lose their salvation all over again. But they're saying in the song to turn out the lights. And I'm telling you this morning, this is the time to turn the lights on. And so let me give you a little bit of this. Uh, Genesis chapter number one, verses one through five. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, void, darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse number three, and God said, let there be light. Turn on the light. Let there be light, and the light came on, and there was light. And God saw that the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness and he gave the light an assignment and a name he called the light day and likewise the darkness he called night the evening and the morning which we knew not of before was the first day was the first day was the first day the chorus of creation is and God said and God said, now listen to me carefully. I, I want you to understand that this light that is coming on is a light of illumination. And in this light, all of the dark things that has been going on in your life is going to be exposed. And that's not negative, that's not demonic, it's just it. So let me put it this way. And God decided that he was going to create or recreate the earth again. And in order to do it, he needed light. And he said, before I create a thing, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the lights on so I can see what I'm working with. So I can see what I have and I can see what I don't have and I can see what I need and I can see what I'll have to create. So he said, let there be light and light was illuminated lights came but the lights came on according to the scripture in the midst of the deep so the lights are now on underwater because there is no sky there is no ground all it is is water upon the face or covering the entire earth and God said let there be light and there was light he saw that the light was good, this is good. The evening and the morning comes in and it's the first day. So seven days of creation. And I'm saying to you, saints of God, 2022 starts the beginning of your seven days of creation. And every, every, uh, every day will represent an entire year so 
2022 is day one and for the whole year lights are gonna come on 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 illumination ideas you're gonna connect with the right person with, with the right person that can push you and blow wind into your sail lights are gonna come on boy I wish the church was full this morning so people can begin to respond by saying lights are coming on lights are coming on the lights are going to come on okay which means that all the things that exist in the dark there's some people who were really really good friends you lost them because of the darkness you're gonna find them when the lights come back on this is this is the season of illumination the lights are gonna come on okay one entire year of lights coming on of lights coming on of lights coming on you're at your greatest place of creation listen if you could really really listen if you could really, really listen and not allow your flesh to rule you, but really, really to understand that there's some things I gotta have that, that gotta happen. And let me tell you something. If you are not 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, okay? 16, 17, 18, 19, you might be able to not pay attention to this. But if you're 23, to whatever age there is, you better listen to what I'm saying. It's time out for playing. This is a season to get your life in order. To get your life in order. I had to do it, you have to do it. So God now starts the chorus of creation and uh, I wanna put up something for you so you can see where I'm going with this for a little while, okay? So, uh, and God said in Genesis 1, verse number 3, God said. And, uh -huh. God, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Uh-huh, next one, uh-huh. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Yes. Verse 9, and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. Verse number 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion. And oh. God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let him have dominion. God said, God said, God said, God said, God said. And when God is speaking, he's putting things in place. And then he brings man in to lord over everything that was here before he got here. There's some things that God is going to position in your life that you're going to bring order to that was here before you got here. But you're being released with an assignment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 28 and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth 29 and God said behold I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, and which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. So, the chorus of creation goes this way, and God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. Now, watch this. Isaiah, you like this. The chorus of creation goes, and God said. We're made in the image and the likeness of God. 
So the chorus of your creation goes like, and Isaiah said, and Bishop said, you shall have what you say, negative, positive, or weary. Things that you speak is coming to pass. I promise you that in the name of Jesus. All right, so uh, we're in our fifth day of this prayer consecration. Uh, Daniel's chapter number 10, verses 1 through 13, and I've been on this for uh, a little while, but it's simply a prelude to all that God is going to do for us in our life. And it reads like this. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hedekel. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had, set, when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Here is a scripture that stays somewhat in the dark for many believers. For hundreds of years, we have set aside the month of January, the beginning of the year, for 21 days of fasting, which in the text, there's absolutely no fasting going on at all. We don't even know where they got that from. Well, we do. Someone misread verse number three. It says, I ate no pleasant bread neither came flesh or wine to my mouth. And because they didn't read chapter number one, they thought he was fasting. When he clearly says, in those days I, Daniel, was mourning. And the scriptures tell us what he was mourning over. The principle here in this particular text is that in the third year of Cyrus the king, a thing is revealed unto Daniel, and the thing is true. The time appointed is long, but he can't handle it because He's emotionally distraught in verse number two. This is what he says. And I, he said, I understood the thing and I understood the vision. And in those days, I was mourning three full weeks. I'm not praying. I'm not seeking the face of God. I'm not, I'm in mourning. I'm crying over some spilt milk. I can't receive it because it's too much going on. 
And I'm telling you, during this consecration and during this season, God is going to be revealing things to us. But if we're angry, if we're upset, if we don't know how to forgive, we don't know how to deal with situations at the time that the Lord is about to put something in our hands, we're too frustrated to receive it. That's a serious, serious thing. Uh, number two, uh, the angel suggests to Daniel that the prince of the kingdom of Persia, in verse number 13, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood him one and 20 days. The same amount of time that he's mourning is the same amount of time that the angel who is on his way to assist him is blocked. How is the angel blocked? The angel is blocked because of what is revealed unto us in verse number 12. Then he said unto me, fear not, O Daniel, for from the first day thou didst set thy heart to understand and to be chastened thyself before God, thy words were heard and I came for your words. So the angel came day one, but he couldn't get to him until day what? Until day what? Until day 24. Now, let me, let me show you this. He says, and I, Daniel, was, uh, 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 and I, Daniel, saw, he said, I, Daniel, was in mourning three, four weeks. I ate no pleasant bread. I ate no, uh, the flesh, f flesh or, or, or wine came to my mouth until the three full weeks had been fulfilled. Then he says, nothing happens in 21 days. Then he, then he says in verse number four, in the fourth and 20th day of the first month, the first month is the beginning of the year, like we're in the beginning of the year right now. And the fourth and 20th day of the first month, as I was by the river, as I was by the river, then this angel showed up. And when the angel showed up, he doesn't show up to assist Daniel. He shows up to tell Daniel what happened during the 21 days that he was mourning. During the 21 days that he's mourning. Your angel is now showing up. He's supposed to be showing up with a gift. He's not showing up with a gift. He's showing up rebuking you over you not being in the place to receive at the time he was pouring it out. Which means that we need serious intercessors around us that understands distractions and can't allow ourselves to get pulled into the stuff that you are trying to pull us into. We must stay focused. Turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. So I would quote it this way. And the Lord came to Bishop and said, Bishop, I'm going to carry you across the nation. I'm going to open up doors. I'm going to give it. And I can't hear it. I said, yeah, I understand what you were saying. But during that time, my mom had just died. So I wasn't even paying attention to nobody. Does that sound like most of us? Most of the time we have in the conversation. That, you tell me? Yeah, but I told you we was coming. We, told, 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 we were going to go such, such place. We got to be on the bus at certain time. Doc, I ain't hear that. No, you didn't hear that because, you know, you just got to tell. That's time I was telling you. you had a telephone call and she said something to you that set you off. And so we couldn't get you on talk. You couldn't even folk. What? If you don't learn the power of compartmentalization, you're going to fail in this season. Let what happened over here remain here. Do not bring that from here over into this column. You're going to lose. And this is what the text is telling us about. And so things that are dark are about to be revealed unto you. The definition of light is this. The definition of light is this. Uh -huh. Light, something that makes vision possible. The natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. Mm -hmm. Synonyms. Blaze, flare, fluorescence, glare, gleam, glow, illumination, incandescence, luminescence, radiance, shine. I come to tell you that God is going to use one of these seven or eight principles to bring you to a serious, serious awareness. Um, I, 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 I had spent a great deal of, of New Year's Day sitting in my bedroom and sending out texts. When the day was over, I had sent out 66 texts to different people that the Lord had laid on my heart 
to speak certain things to. And in every text that I sent out, this was the word. Turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. Uh, I don't know how many of you have lived in Raleigh or in Durham and has taken in the city as a tourist. It's taken in the city as the tourist. I, I know you live here, but have you taken the city in as a tourist with Raleigh's 3.7 million people traveling to this area every single year, coming through the airports? Coming through, have you taken that we're, we're in the lineup of 21 places to go for vacations? Have you taken in the city? When you get disgusted with being something, you want to move from Durham and you want to go to, 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 to Charlotte, have you taken in the city? Those of you that are in Charlotte, have you even connected with Charlotte? Because when I was coming up as a little kid in school, they had this book called City Mouse and Country Mouse. City Mouse and Country Mouse. You, you remember that? You don't remember that. They don't have the books. Well, if, if it's us, we you know, 50s and our 60s. But City Mouse and Country Mouse. And uh, the, the City Mouse lived in high-rise building. The Country Mouse lived on the farm. And they traveled and switched places. And they found out later on that it's really, really not that much different. Uh, one of the principles that I got out of it is that most times when we travel, we travel within the realm of our financial and our cultural connections. So when I first came to North Carolina and I saw the projects in North Carolina, I thought that was, that was cool because I came from New York City to the high rise buildings and so on and so forth like that, 15 stories way up, these little small things, people stacked up on top of each other to come down here to North Carolina to see these little condo things. We thought it was, the, we thought it was cool. And when we left New York, to come to North Carolina, we left the projects in New York to come to the projects in North Carolina. So we left one environment, came to another environment, but the same culture. And so my grandchildren says, we want to do something different. I said, we're going to go to Charlotte. He said, I've been to Charlotte. I said, you ain't been to the Charlotte I've been to. Oh, yeah, we, 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 we going to Charlotte. We, we gonna, we, come on, come on, come on. And, and my little grandson said, we lived in Charlotte. And I said, yeah, I know you lived in Charlotte. I know exactly where you was living at in Charlotte. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna take you to Charlotte. And so we got into the to the uh, to the truck, had a driver assign for us, made reservations to stay in a hotel down there in Charlotte, and made our way there. Got to the hotel. The hotel looked like we were in California. My God, the Ballantine Hotel, unbelievable. Drove around, came on down, carried, introduced them to a few of my friends at NASCAR. Going through NASCAR, just, just, and they had a buffet set up in these chains. They had a whole buffet restaurant set up at the NASCAR place. Man of God, man of God. Let me sow into your life, man of God, is <laughs> what Darnell said. I was so into your life. Decided to take them to the, to, to the mall, got into the mall. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. My little grandson turned and said to me, jar and said to me, said, in fact, one of the times you, you, you went there with us, right? To, 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 he said, he, he, he turned around and he said, he said, Papa, this ain't no Charlotte. I said, this is Charlotte. Papa, this is not Charlotte. Well, you, 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 you tricking us, Papa. No, how am I really tricking you? you were exposed to something that you've been exposed to across the street that is going on across the street. Folks deal with relationships like that. Don't look down on me. They deal with relationships like that. Same person, different name. Well, all the relationships end up the same way. It's the same thing over and over again. We start off, no, no, no. This is, she, she's cool, she's everything. She's everything that I need. And I just look at them and shake my head. And I said, I give you four months. In four months, you're going to be like, nah, I ain't going to be arguing. Yeah, you'll be arguing in four months. Well, how do you know that, Rev? I know it because the lights is on. See? And the lights is off with you. And the problem ain't her. 
The problem is you have a problem in showing your true self as you walk in. So now she buys into something that only exists in courtship. It does not exist in marriage because you can't keep that up in marriage. You can't give chocolates and flowers every day in marriage. <laughs> I'm sorry. And so when the lights comes on in this particular season, it's going to blow you away. I decided to take my grandchildren during uh, 4th of July. In the midst of COVID, I didn't want to go with all of it. I said, let's celebrate as tourists in North Carolina. Took them to two hotels, spent a night in two different places. Took them into Cary and took them to the Umstead Hotel. Took them into Durham and took them to the Washington Duke. Two places, totally different, everything. And we got there and folks were golfing and the rooms were spectacular. There go a little jar and think he know everything. Told my, this is not technically, he, he, he nine years old. This is not technically Durham. Well, what is it technically? This is not technically Durham. It's not Durham because it's the Washington Duke. So we're in Washington. So what in the world? And he's speaking with such authority and don't know what in the world he's talking about. You get around people who are just like that. They speak with great authority and know not what they talk. Somebody told me the other day, you can't catch no COVID on the airplane. You can't catch no COVID on the airplane because the airplane, uh, uh, they, they filtered it. I don't care how much the airplane filters their filter. The air, if you ain't got no mask on, I'm sitting next to you and you cough, they, it don't filter it so well to snatch it out of your mouth and filter it. But no, it don't do that. Come on and join us at our church. We got the, we got the, we got the, what, 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 what those things called? What's this, those, those things called? We got the air purifiers. I got one there, I got one back there. We got the air purifiers. The air purifier ain't going to help you with me over here spitting like I'm spitting. You better make sure you covered. People tell us all kinds of stuff because the lights are turned off. I said, let's have a fellowship together in Durham as a tourist. My daughter said, Daddy, I didn't even know this was here. I didn't even know that restaurant existed. I didn't know that. I, I didn't know. No, because we hang out in Applebee's <laughs> and in Briar Creek. That's all we do. That's all we know. And if we're going to go high, we go to P.F. Chain, a little cheesecake factory every now and then. But we stay right within this circle, and there's so much to offer. And we don't know how to get it. And we're running every which way when our destiny and our purpose is to use the ability to create with words that comes out of our mouth. And I'm a living proof and living example of it, that if you believe it long enough and say it strong enough and stick to it, the earth will genetically change, alter itself to meet your need. Listen, I don't care where Chinese people go. They set up a Chinese restaurant and Negroes come to it. I don't care where there are Jews, wherever they go, I am telling you, people find where they are. But us as a nation of African Americans can't find a solid footing. We can't find it. So as a result of that, we're coming in and going out of our country saying, huh, to the immigration officer, because the immigration officer that's going to let us in our country don't even speak English. <laughs> we can't even make out what they're saying. And, 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 and don't get to a place where you have to uh, be put on hold for American uh, Express or Visa because the person that is talking to you is in India. It's time for us to turn the lights on. When the lights comes on, you're going to need individuals. This is where we're at. You're going to need individuals who are around you that understand and can discern the time and the season to which we're in. 
So I told all of my staff members, all of my employees, people who run some of my businesses outside of, 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 of Durham, I said, I want everything paid up three months in advance. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but I want three months in advance because a dark thing is going to hit us and when it hit us, we don't need to be phased by what is happening. And when I spoke the word, funds began to come from different places automatically. It begins to come and drops into pockets. Why? Because the first thing you got to do, you got to speak it. And if you speak a thing, if thou shalt say a thing, if thou shalt decree a thing, if shalt thou shalt declare a thing, it shall be so. So we've been successful for two years because the prayer warriors and the intercessors for the first time in the history of Bethel has been faithful and been in place. Prayer warriors. What is a prayer warrior definition? A prayer warrior is a term used by many evangelical and other Christians to refer to anyone who is committed to praying for others. Intercessor. An intercessor is a person who intervenes on behalf of another, especially by prayer praying as the person and not for the person. So one must not confuse a prayer warrior with an intercessor. Uh, a, a prayer warrior is a person who might be going around praying all the time. An intercessor might pray one time, one year for four months and don't pray no more. They, 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 they're on uh, uh, spiritual assignments of God not to pray for you but to pray as you. So the difference between a prayer warrior and a Intercessor is different, but there is an area where both of them come together on. And I want to show you a little bit of their likenesses. Mm -hmm. The qualities of an intercessor and prayer warrior may differ, but this is where they are alike. Mm -hmm. They love well. Love well. They are submitted to the Lord. And submitted to God. Uh-huh. They serve well. Yeah. They are humble. See, I know some people are, 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 are not intercessors because their service is horrible. Watch this. They place their confidence in the Lord. Mm. They are discerners. They are discerners. Anytime you see the word discern or discernment, just remember this. Hell. People who discern well, discern well because they've been in the fire that they see you getting ready to get into. Here we go. They are determined. Mm -hmm. They remain hopeful. They are repentant. They are patient. They study the Bible. Mm. They make time to listen to God. They are available for prayer. They acknowledge who the real enemy is. They worship through hardship. They put on the whole armor of God. They speak life-giving words. I want you to understand this. This is day five of this consecration. The lights have just come on. Day five of the consecration and year one of your creating the environment that you're going to live in. To ask God a series of questions during this time might work, may not. The issue is, what do you want to happen? And what do you see happening? I went to my grandson and I said to Justin, I said, Justin, you cannot Keep coming to the house if you're not vax, uh, if you don't take the vaccin, if you're not vaccinated. Did I say that right? Vaccinated. Oh, he's been listening to people and, you know, power to the people and the white man this and the white man that and so on and so forth like that. And so as a result of that, I said, well, I won't be seeing you a whole lot because Papa is old. Papa has a pre-existing uh, condition. And Papa cannot afford, afford to get hit with this. Giants can't afford to get hit with this. And so, 
finally he decides after I talked to him he weighs his options and he doesn't want to be vaccinated still because whoever's in his head is in his head time plus time equals influence but he doesn't want to be cut off of his bat cave see see he wanted see, see when, when, when the weekend come he want to get out of there and get over where he can move freely and ain't nobody bothering him and so on and so forth. So now he's weighing his options. Then a friend of his has a scare. He has a headache and he thinks he has COVID and Justin has a headache. So now he comes downstairs and he says, Papa, I have this headache. And I said, COVID. <laughs> he starts coughing. I said, COVID. He said, I'm cold. I said, COVID. I said, COVID. He said, why do you keep on saying it? I said, because you're going to contract this thing and it's going to be bad for you because you're moving around all these people. You're all at the mall. You can't imagine. And you're not wearing the mask all right. You're wearing the face and the nose is all out. And, and, and then most of the young people, they just wear it up under their chin. It's an accessory. I said, you're going to be in trouble. Meanwhile, I'm talking to my friend in, in um, Alabama who called me and asked me to talk to his son, who is 17 years old, who is having the same problem with hanging out with a whole bunch of people because they go to these different schools where these ideologies are really, really strong. And I said to him, I said, man, protect your mom, your dad, and get the vaccine, and so on and so forth like that. He, 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 now, Bishop, I respect you, but see, you don't know what's in it and all that kind of stuff, and this is going into my body. Yesterday evening, I got a telephone call from his dad. Said the son is in the hospital. This morning, I got the telephone call from his dad. The 17 year old boy is dead. Because this sucker ain't playing. Turn the lights on. Wake up and see what's there. So, my first call is to who? My first call is to Justin. I let this, I gotta let this knucklehead know. Before we get to this particular place, he decides that he's going to take the, the test. So I said, Victor, go and get us those rapid tests because Jaren leaves the house and goes to hang out at one of his friend's houses and the friend house that he goes into, the little boy has COVID. So I said, you can't come back here. This is crazy. You can't have the fun and you can't move around the way that you've been moving around before this thing happened. And I don't know why preachers ain't preaching it. Oh, I, I, they, 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 they scared. They want tithe and they want offering. So they, they're doing the same thing that the country is doing, keeping the place open to bring in the little coins and people are dying. We did the rapid test. Justin knows everything. You can't tell him nothing. So he pops open the test and he swaps one nose, sneezes and puts it in there, breaks it off and puts it, put the drops on it. And and the instruction says, both knows. He said, well, I, it's the same thing. Said, Whatever's in this nose is in this nose. Within seconds, two lines come up on the test. And the two lines suggest that you are positive. He walks over to it. He sees it. Is that true, Pop? I said, yeah, but I said, I think it's a false positive because you didn't swab both noses. I do just, I do uh, jarrings. We do a uh, breeze. And I said, Justin, come on, take my test and do yours over again. And he swabs both noses and he puts it and he does the dropping on it. And he holds the test there. He's afraid, so he walks away. And when he walks away, I take the test that he just did, put it on the side and take the test that is positive and put it in the slot that he left it in. I said, how much time you got, Justin? He said, four more minutes. I said, come on. No, no, I'm not looking at it until four minutes come. The four minutes is up. I said, come and see it. He walks over to see, he sees it. He falls down on the floor. Victor yells. You don't even hear Victor ever even praise God. For real! And I, my, 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 I was going to let it go, Victor, for like a whole week. But the pressure that he was under... I had to disclose, here it is and you're negative. He said to me, he said, Papa, you really, really need to pray for me because when you speak, things happen. I said, no, COVID is not happening because I'm speaking. 
COVID is happening to people because they ain't paying attention. That's what's happening there. So for those of you that are in distress on the fifth day going into the sixth day, and I think the sixth day we're talking about health, right? The sixth day we're talking about health. Okay, give me my sixth day uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, the sixth day, right? We're going into health. Thank you very much. Uh, here's 10 scriptures as I close. 10 scriptures this morning to help those of you who find yourself in doubt, disappointment, despair. Read these scriptures and pray these scriptures over the next few days as healing is going to be your portion. The first one is Jeremiah 9, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Matthew 6, 33 and 34. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Psalms 18 and 3. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Philippians 1 and 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Matthew 6, 25 and 26. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John uh, 14, 1 and 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Psalms 1, 18, 5, and 6. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The scripture says, in all of our ways, acknowledge him first and he shall direct our path. 12 days, 12 days. Can you put that up for me? 12 days of prayer, consecration, believing the Lord for major, major things to transpire in your life from the 5th through the 16th. We're in day five right now. Day six is upon us. Write your vision, make it plain, write it on tablets. I speak to all of the intercessors and all of the prayer warriors and I ask you not to allow your vessels to become contaminated with the pressures and the cares of this world. That the Lord is dependent upon you to stand in the gap and to bear the infirmities of the weak. And for your faithfulness, he will bless you going in, coming out on the rooftop in the valley. You'll never have to want for anything even on furlough or the loss of wages on your job, the Lord will supernaturally scoop in and take care of you because you take care of his business. This is year number one, day one of the creation.
and we're asking God to turn the lights on and the lights are coming on right now in Jesus name amen and amen <laughs>
Give them a seed. You've been stealing from them? Stop it. The tithe is the Lord's, and your offering proves how you feel about them. Do it, and watch God bless you in the name of Jesus. Four ways to sow your seed. Text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving Bethelfamily.org. Cash app, dollar sign, BFWC 515. Uh, or mail to 515 Dow Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27701. All right, Taroma Seed Sowers. Taroma Seed Sowers. Now listen to me, listen to me. I'm getting ready to cut a lot of people off. Getting ready to cut a lot of people off because I think that if you're sowing into a life, that life ought to sow back into at least the soil that they're pulling things out of. You can't make withdrawals out of banks that you don't have deposits in. I am telling you, I'm not talking to the, the, the vast congregation, I'm talking to people that I sow into, that I sow into, that your success comes because I sow into you. I want to see you blessed and prosperous. I want to see you do a Taroma. Now, there's no amount of the Taroma. It's just supposed to be 2.5% of all of your what have, what have you. But nobody tells you that your Taroma should be 100 or 1,000. You choose within yourself what it should be. All right? It's the insignificance. It's the crumbs that brings the coins. <laughs> it's the crumbs that brings the coins. You trust God and watch the Lord multiply your life all right Taroma seed givers get it get ready and thank God for those of you who have been faithful in this area you have been faithful in this area and God has blessed you and he's blessed me because of you all right uh, cash app dollar sign general of warfare uh, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com PayPal me GGB ministries text to give text Bloomer to 844-889-1559 payment link email media at bishopbloomer.com all right it's time to sow that seed now I'm believing God for 20 persons for 20 persons to sow the seed or 21 21 persons sowing the seed this morning of one hundred dollars as if we were in the sanctuary we're going back uh, since we virtual we left brick and mortar we had click and order expenses are the same we got to pull this thing off i'm asking you to bring that seed of one hundred dollars bring that seed of one hundred dollars and then the masses in the church over and above your tithe i ask you uh, your tithe and your offering i ask you to sacrifice a twenty dollar seed i want to see that come up in our financial reports by Tuesday night. I want you to do this right now. Get that seed, get that offering right now. Get that offering right now and begin to sow your seed. Fall out, down here praying. Lord, search my heart. While I'm down here praying. Lord, search my heart. Online giving BethelFamily.org Cash app Dollar sign BFWC 515 uh, Or mail to uh, 515 Durham North Carolina 27701 Cash app General of Warfare General of Warfare Zell Bloomer at BishopBloomer.com PayPal me GGB Ministries Text to give Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559 Hey You know when I'm right, you know when I'm wrong, you know whether I'm right or wrong. Oh, I said, search me, search me, Lord. I said, search me, search me, Lord. Search me, search me, Lord. I said, now search. Oh, you know, Lord, with the 
tonight so we'll see you tonight and then we'll see you in the morning it's a time to prayer come on it's a time it's a time to pray it's a time to pray and when you pray the enemy becomes prey you become the devourer that the devourer is trying to devour when you pray oh. our father the heart in heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit the comforter rest remain and abide with us now and forevermore in Jesus name see you tonight search me Lord